That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Fairly alarmed here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the MOT Introspective. This is a new segment of the of our channel, Masters of the Nerdiverse, where we will discuss some of the lingering topics of the entire Nerdiverse and kind of give our two cents on how we can actually make this place, this universe, a better place. This Nerdiverse. Mind you, I am, of course, your host, Mike G, and I'm extremely ecstatic to welcome to the show TJ, the Ninja Nerd. How's it going, dude? It's going great, man. Uh, you know, but I've been, I kind of been wanting to get on, this, get on this podcast for a while and glad to be here. Thanks, man. We're absolutely, I'm absolutely ecstatic that you're on the show. I do appreciate you taking your time out of your ninja out of your ninja day, you know, having to do backflips and stuff, you know what I'm saying? I know that can get, that that can be time consuming, you know what I'm saying? Learning all the, <laughs> learning all the jutsus, bro, you know what I'm saying? To do this show, so I'm happy to have you on. Uh, and happy that you uh, kind of brought this topic to my attention. Uh, uh, just, yeah, I'm, I've been seeing how the Star Wars fandom has been lately, and I've just been wanting to bring this topic up. Yes, man. And, uh, yes. Yeah. and uh, I've just been, you know, with everything going on with The Last Jedi and Solo, I just wanted to give my two cents on it. Definitely. That's why we're here, man. So let's get into it. Uh, the Star Wars fandom, what can we say about it that isn't really apparent is that it's actually maybe ruining lives <laughs> at this <laughs> point. <laughs> People are having like nervous breakdowns and leaving social media. And how do you fix a problem like this? How would you suggest one? What is, what was your first introduction to star Wars? How did you get into this fandom yourself? Uh, when I was a kid, I watched the original trilogy and, you know, uh, we, and I saw, and I played all the games when I was younger, and then the prequels came out, saw those. Then, then when Force Awakens came out, and then kind of I was I was already a fan, still of Star Wars, been. a big fan. But when Force Awakens came out, uh, and it know. just, it, and I was I was, and when I was when Force Awakens came out, I was. It, it just kind of reunited my fan, my fan of Star Wars, and yeah, and then Rogue One came, then Last Jedi, then you know we started, <clears throat> uh, then then they started announcing that they were gonna do, you know, it's basically solo movies where it focused on characters from the Star Wars universe, right? And when they announced a solo movie. A Han Solo movie, and it I wasn't really excited about it, honestly. Nobody was. <laughs> no one was. <laughs> I, it, it just didn't. It didn't really interest me. I'd rather see an Old Republic movie or Obi Wan or yeah. or Boba Fett or something than Han Solo. And I saw the movie. I liked it, but yeah, and it was. But I would have rather had maybe even somebody else, and and but with the Last Jedi, I, I love the Last Jedi. And I, I know it's yeah. good. It's a good amount. It's a good amount of people that don't like it, but I, I love that movie. And it's funny about the Last Jedi is that it's so polarizing, right? Like either yeah. I I love it. Like I loved everything they did with it. I love that they're moving forward with the lore they're moving forward with the star wars of it rather than it just be the luke skywalker story you know what i mean it can it can move past that and i think that's what spurs a lot of the of this fandom outrage uh, currently because star wars fans have been kind of trolly 
since the Empire Strikes Back with Luke, I am your father. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. Just, you know what I mean? It's just because we have the because the internet's bigger now than it was in the seventies, or existent rather, people f- feel that they're more open to give their opinion no matter what because they're hiding behind the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like, or so you, it, you go up to the prequels where yeah, I like the yeah. prequels, uh, but you know it's you know with Jar Jar and you, it recently, <laughs> recently came out that the the actor who played Jar Jar I don't remember his name, but uh. Yeah, he's basically he was, even though the internet wasn't as big then, he was still getting harassed and a lot and stuff like that. He was became very depressed and everything, and it's just like, dude, he's he's just the actor. He's not the character. If and and now now that now that Force Awakens came out and everybody's on the internet now and everybody's. Uh, I remember when the uh, very first trailer for uh, Force Awakens came out, and and when the first thing they show is Finn coming up in the uh, Jakku, and people had a problem with uh, the black with the black stormtrooper. Yeah, man. Uh, the Force Awakens trailer was kind of worrying how much people were so negative towards the first face you see is of a minority of African-American descent. You know, everybody was so angry and not to mention that the same character was holding a lightsaber, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. And I don't remember them being so angry when Samuel Jackson was Mace Windu, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it's because the internet wasn't so big and not so many people had a, had a big voice about it, but what do we do with a fan base like this? Like, how do you feel that we can actually fix this amongst the internet that is so wild west anybody can really say what they want and threaten how they want? Well, not not everybody who's disliking Star Wars now, now is because of racist reasons or anything True. like that. And, well, not, well at, I remember at Comic-Con this past year, they announced they're bringing Clone Wars back. Yeah. And I remember it, it's the reaction to that was it was great. Like it was just all the fans just coming together over this and because we all love this show so much. And right. yeah. And we and you know, a lot of people aren't like the idea of these solo movies or these character movies that they're apparently gonna be doing. And with the, I think with the, with how Solo is doing right now, and it, they get bombed at the box office, I think, yeah, yeah, and bombed hard, yeah, and and you, with the sort of polarizing nature of the Last Jedi, I think that what now, as far as people who as. Uh, let me say this: As far as the people who did who didn't like Star Wars for racist reasons, you, there's nothing yeah, much you can do with that. Yeah, there's not much, much you can do with that. They're going to be mad no matter what. You know, what I'm saying these are the same people who were mad that Lawrence Fishburne was playing Perry White. You know, what I'm saying the Man of Steel. You know, just because it's a you know a black actor taking over a traditionally white role, right? You, you can't really fight that because people unfortunately people are going to be racist that's just how it is you know what i mean i think and, one way you can fix the fandom not yeah. not the racist people but that they just the people just aren't big fans of star wars right now and i think if episode nine comes out and it's just as good or even better than the force awakens yeah, i think yeah. i think people will sort of i guess come back it's like a better word, come back to it. That's a good point. I think that if they kind of bring back that nostalgia that The Force Awakens awoke in people, you know what I mean? It will turn the tide better in their favor. And I also think it's a bit of uh, Star Wars fatigue. That's why a lot of people didn't really go see Solo. Um, Not to mention that the character's not that exciting to make a full movie about. 
Um, that being said, I do think if they spaced out these movies a bit more, make people miss it. So that's one of the things I believe can really help uh, revitalize the franchise, which is kind of weird because the franchise was just re- revitalized with The Force Awakens, um, which is kind of rough because you <sighs> Star Wars fans are a special kind of weird because they want new... St- they, it's, it's almost like they don't want new stories. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they fight against aggressive change. And I think that's why the last Jedi was so polarizing for people because it was aggressive change, you know, like major characters died, not going to spoil anything here, but they kind of want what they, what they know. They want Jedis. They want smugglers. They want space battles. But do you think that the fan base will be happy once once we're allowed to be past that? Well, I remember one of the big complaints coming out of The Force Awakens was that everything was the same. Exactly. Now right? we get into The Last Jedi, everything's too different now. Like, what what do you want me to, what us to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they don't know what they want, right? <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? You know, the porridge is too hot. The porridge is too cold. You know, it's, and that's a balance that is costing them millions of dollars you know, to try to find is like, maybe not make solo your first solo film. You know, like you said, uh, if they did a uh, old Republic movie. I did a podcast about my top 10 video games of all time. And nice of the old Republic's like my favorite star Wars game. Hats down. I just love. Nice oh, of yeah, the that's Republic. my favorite star Wars game too. There you go, man. Uh, and if they did that movie, I would be first one, first seat popcorn ready to go. You know, or even Bubble Fett, or even an Obi Wan movie, or even I would just like a young Yoda movie or something, you know? But it's, you got to get fans excited. And Star Wars is so the same that doing it every year without mixing it up, people are going to get bored. You know what I mean? I think that's where Marvel excels, not to get too much on Marvel, but it's that their movies are just different enough out the formula. So it feels fresh. Where Rogue One, has the similar beats to Force Awakens, has the similar beats to uh, The Last Jedi. And I think they need to mix things up and not be afraid to upset the fans. You know, I don't know. I, I remember when, when, when the new Star Trek movies were coming out with Chris Pine. And, yep. and um, you know, they were doing, before then, they were having all the old start the other Star Trek movies they were doing before that had was basically had the original styles written of the T V show. And yeah. and it, but as you see with the movies, the box office kept declining and declining, declining every year. Mm-hmm. But then they do this reboot with with everything that's different now and suddenly it just shoots back up. And yeah. And the only people that were complaining were the original Star Trek fans. Of course. And, and I think that's what Star Wars needs to do is eventually start, if they keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to see the decline, decline, and decline. And well, yes, it may not... Uh, I guess it may not be what's the word I'm looking for. It may not be a sudden, sudden. I guess like a sudden shoot. shift. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Like with start the the uh, reboot of Star Trek, but over time, it's it's not gonna just go straight down if you keep doing it the same. Exactly, and it's. Someone's going to be mad, right? Like, that's with any hyper-popular product, you know what I mean? Someone's going to not be completely happy with it. And the funny thing about the Star Trek movies, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, mind you, is that they try to do the best of both worlds, kind of saying, oh, no, old Star Wars fans, your universe still exists, but we just created this new one for new Star Trek fans. You know what I mean? Because that was kind of the whole crux of the first reboot movie was is that 
the old Spock went to a different, I guess, timeline to this new timeline. You know, and Star Wars tried to do that with The Force Awakens with here's Rey and Finn and BB-8 and all these new characters, but still pay homage to the older heads like like uh, Han Solo and Princess Leia and, and in The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker. So it's you can't make everyone hey. happy, you know, so at the same time, you kind of have to play. It's a funky balance, you know what I mean? And with the Force Awakens, I do think that they needed to keep it the same for that particular movie because right. you know we're getting back into Star Wars, and you know the prequels weren't as favorable, and yeah. it put a bad taste in people's mouths. And I think they need to remind this, remind people that this is this is we you know we're back home again. You know, this exactly. Is, that, is that way that we know and love? Exactly. It's like, like you were mentioning the prequels. It took like almost 10, 20 years for the prequels like to get out of people's system. You know <laughs> what I mean? And because the backlash was so aggressive that they didn't, Lucasfilm didn't know what to do with it. They were like, "What? we're just trying to make films here. What do we, we don't even want to touch seven, eight, nine right now. And the, the property was stagnant and stagnant and stagnant until uh, Disney bought Star Wars because it was dirt cheap because it wasn't making any money. Well, not dirt cheap. It was like billions of dollars. But in comparison, and they said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to just remind everyone on how awesome Star Wars is, right? We're going to give them the good feels, Millennium Falcon flying towards the screen, star battles, lightsabers, the whole deal. And what the what the last Jedi did with with Ryan Johnson was was like okay, we've placated to you, we gave you your dessert first. Now here's this big ass steak, <laughs> you know, of new content <laughs> that you're gonna have to choke down. I hope you're ready. And fans just weren't having it. It uh, the the last Jedi brought ideas of no Jedi, okay, no Empire, okay. No resistance. We're getting mad now. <laughs> you know, no Luke Skywalker. We're getting very mad now. And these fans have become so vitriolic that they're going after just actors who just were doing their job. Um, the poor actress who got chased off of um, the internet because they didn't like her character. They were personally attacking her, like trying to hack her accounts and threatening her on Twitter. Hey, yeah. Tell me yeah. Absolutely. And it's it fandoms when they get that toxic. I think any fandom can get that way. There's some there's some football fans that are literally insane. You know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> that, that's 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 for any sports any sports fan. It just yeah. lose their minds. They just lose their minds, right? And you can apply this to anything. Uh comics of video games. There's anime. some Resident Evil f- anime, man. There's some people where it's like you bad mouth Vegeta, you just may get stabbed, bro. Like, like what? <laughs> Who says something about Vegeta and catch it, jumps out of a tree, stabs you in the stomach, Ugh, you know? And it's like, it's not the fandom that needs to be fixed; it's humanity <laughs> in a weird <laughs> way, right? Like beyond Star Wars, how do we fix people? And with, and that's a bigger question that I can't answer. But I think healthy transitions is what Star Wars needs right now for those super fans who are just like, you know, and I, and I think fans go this way where it's there's three different types of fans. Right. And just I'm kind of what's your idea of where I'm coming from. You're right. Your thoughts on where I'm coming from here. There's fan A, the poor just to code where it's like, I didn't like The Last Jedi. I saw it, but I didn't like it. But that's OK. They'll come up with a better one. Then there's there's fan B, who is man I hated the Last Jedi. I'm just going to sit here and be mad. And whenever people ask me about it, I'm going to tell them my two cents. And then there's fan C, where it's like I ultra hated this movie. I want everyone who made it to die, and I'm going to find them online and harass them viciously until I feel vindicated. And this goes with everything, like. I follow guys who do the uh, release the Snyder cut for Justice League. These guys who are dying on that hill. And I just <laughs> see them get so mad. 
Like, why won't you release it? Like, and you can't even jump into a conversation like that. Where it's like, it's, you know, it doesn't exist. That's never right? gonna happen. <laughs> you know, it's never going to happen. It doesn't exist. Shut up, man. It's behind closed doors. And they just go off on you now. You're you're the focus of their of their anger. And it's the same thing with these Star Wars fans. It's like, no, Last Jedi was a good movie. Like, honestly, like, it made you think about stuff. It tried to challenge the conventions of the, of the fandom. The whole movie was about fans, right? Yeah. In, in my opinion, like, the movie felt like it was telling fans to get over it. Without going too much into spoilers, a lot of people didn't like what they did with Luke, Luke in the movie. Yes. And, and you... It's, it's some you may con, some people may consider this a spoiler, but it's in the trailers. But Luke Skywalker, he's basically kind of done with being a Jedi, and yeah. and he's and he's just kind of just went off to this island to just go, die. just get away. Yeah, it's just he's and, I came here to die, you know. <laughs> and he and a lot of people didn't like that he's basically not, not wanting to go back. And it's a particular scene that a lot of people don't like either. It's yeah. where, when Ray comes up and gives him the lightsaber mm-hmm. and and he just tosses it. He chucks it. I don't, I don't, I don't know why people don't like it. I just, I just don't understand. Why don't they like it? <laughs> it's because it's, he represents the director. You know what I mean? Luke Skywalker <laughs> is Ryan Johnson saying, Guys, you got to get over this stuff. There's so much more. The whole movie is about there's so much more to the Force than Jedi. There's so much more to the, to the Force than Sith. And then you have on the opposite side of it, you have Kylo Ren's like, I don't care about the Empire. I'm no longer like fascinated with my grandfather. Like he he destroys the Darth Vader helmet as sim- symbolizing he's no longer like that's not the path he's choosing to walk. You know what I mean? He doesn't care about the Resistance. He wants to just do something new. Everybody wants a new start, except the except the fans. You know what I mean? Like the whole movie is screaming for a new start, and it forces yeah. you into it. You know, yeah. And the thing about that that Luke scene, what what main reason I like it because it says the same thing in ten seconds, maybe even less than that. Then if then said if he would, well, he does eventually go into it, but it says the same thing when he starts going to why. That that he does want to go back, and you pretty much said that pretty much at the beginning of the movie when he tosses yeah. the lightsaber. Yeah, it perfectly symbolizes the whole movie. <clears throat> the, the, how, what's the first thing you see Luke Skywalker do? Uh, Ray gives him the lightsaber. He looks at it and just tosses it over a mountain. You know what I mean? You're like what? And I laughed. I, I laughed at that scene. Like, okay, I like what they're doing. They're they're. It's thump, they're thumbing their nose at convention because what what does Yoda do in Empire Strikes Back when when Luke comes to find him he messes with him you know what I mean he acts like some old feeble creature and and Luke's looking for this you know badass Jedi master and this happens to be the small little gribbling but Luke is like Jedi and Sith have done nothing to help this galaxy <laughs> like they've actually made things worse in almost every situation. You know, like it's setting up really bad expectations for people who actually have to live in these worlds and think that these gods among men with powers and lightsabers can just, you know, complete their battles for them. And he's like, no, this needs to stop. You know what I mean? Like, we need to move past this. And not to get into much spoilers for The Last Jedi, even when he has a scene with a certain person, they explain that everything that the characters need to know aren't bottled in Jedi lore. They already know it. You know what I mean? They can move past it. They can grow behind, grow from it. And your angry fan is like, no, Jedi is forever. I li-. there's there's actually religions based on the Jedi order, like real oh, life yeah. ones, like yeah. this ordained I think like Jediism or something. Yeah, Jediism. I'm like, oh man, like, like, ugh. am I that big of a fan to where I'm like, I'm gonna. When my son is born, I'm gonna make him wear weighted clothing. When my son's gonna—he's gonna be three years old with like a five-pound sh- shirt on, 
So when he's a grown kid, he's like he can fight at ten times Earth gravity. I'm not gonna <laughs> like, do that. Like no, like, like no. You know, like Dragon Ball Z when they take the weighted clothes off, just makes yeah. a huge crater in the yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah, like Rock Lee. Like my, you know, my son's about to go ball for Pop Warner. He takes off his, he takes off his weights <laughs> and they crush the ground. That's child abuse, man. No, it's just it's the same thought process. Like this is fiction, guys. Like this is storytelling. This is lore. Like it's not, it's not so detrimental to your life to the point where you have to threaten people and be toxic online. But you can't tell that to people because they're so passionate about it that it's an insult to question them. Some people. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have that conversation with irrational people. We're asking irrational people to look at things rationally. You know, and that when that comes to anything, and it only gets deeper, it, you can apply that to religion. You can apply that to lifestyle. If The moment you start questioning an irrational person's ideals, you're threatening them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, they they get so caught up in that they're right. They they feel like they feel like you're attacking them. You're like like uh, let's say if I were to say uh, I don't know, let's say if I were to say the Dark Knight is a trash movie. Yeah, I say right. if I were to say that. Yeah, and people would just you start just going in on you if you yeah. say this <laughs> and. Well, like, man, I I remember uh, I remember uh, a, a podcast that I watched. He said he doesn't like Rick and Morty. Yeah, and and man, man they went in on it. It's, it's <laughs> funny because me, we are content creators, right? We yeah. we put ourselves out there. We voice our opinions and hope with hands closed that people listen and agree or disagree or react to it, right? Like, I can't just go on Twitter and be like, hey, guys, guess what? Infinity War was trash. Don't (laughs) at me. (laughs) Cass is going to go in on me hard. Like, you crazy, man. This is why XYZ and Thanos is the best villain. And I don't want to hear that, right? I'm just like, look, this is my opinion. We have to walk a a very thin line of kind of neutrality. Unless we're very popular passionate about something like i'll go on i'll go online and be like look my favorite star wars movie of all time is empire strikes back that's my favorite uh, one and uh and by the way i do not think the dark knight is trash i just okay. want to let y'all know that. I was, <laughs> if that was i wasn't gonna like front you bro like but um, <laughs> but but like just to just to clear the record but yeah you go online and especially if you're in a position of getting people's attention you kind of have to be Switzerland in a way. You have to be neutral. You know what I mean? Like, unless you want that heat. Some cats don't mind the heat. You know what I'm saying? They like it spicy. They just want to go in there and just go on to, like, a Dragon Ball Reddit form. Hey, <laughs> all caps, guess what? Gohan is trash. And then you just see people go in, like, oh, no, this is why. In, like, a five-page, you know, Iliad a story on why Gohan's the best. It's like, you kind of have to protect yourself or brace yourself for what's going to happen. You know what I mean, in in worse situations are the people who actually have to be these characters. You know what I mean? Like Harrison Ford is old enough; he don't he don't care. He don't give a shit. He's just like, all right, come at me. I didn't. I've been I've been, wanting, I've been trying to die since Empire Strikes Back. You guys won't rest. You know what I'm saying? The fans won't allow it, man. And how do you fix a fan base like this? I say the way I would fix it is a bit drastic. I would just scorch earth the entire franchise. I would break it all down and then start anew. You, so you just do a complete reboot? I wouldn't do a complete reboot. I would I would let things because I'm I kinda if you can avoid a reboot, reboot's like a reboot to me is like filing for bankruptcy. You know what I'm saying? It's like the last resort. <laughs> like there's nothing you can do to salvage this. Move forward, but if you want to get my attention destroy like get rid of the jedi get rid of the sith get rid of the empire get rid of the resistance the rebels and just do something different you want star wars is such a such a macro name that you can make anything about it you know what i mean you can have a whole different sect of force users a universe apart that do that work it a completely different way if you want to get rid of all those toxic fans 
and just have them hate it, have them disappear. The only way you get rid of vermin is to bomb the entire house, right? <laughs> that's the way I would do it. Like I would, I'm. That's why I like um, the um, the Last Jedi so much. It's because it's not because it's like, oh man, I hate Jedi or I hate the Sith. I love the Jedi, man. Like every time I played the, uh, the Old Republic, I went Jedi every time, and I just did Sith so I can get the achievement. But um, I just want something different, man. I just I want something fresh. And if if it is Jedi. Tell a different story, man. Like I'm so done with. I think that's why I want a Republic, so we can do something different. Because you know, I want to see the you know, the army of Jedi versus the army of the Sith. Right. I want and, to see Darth Revan. You know what I'm saying? And like Darth Sidious and the Jedi Order on Dantooine. There's so much you can do with that. You know what I mean? And it's just decisions. It's like, do they own the rights to that? There's a lot of things that. And it's like Disney, since they bought Star Wars, have been very, very adamant on not doing anything that predates the trilogy. May it be the exp- expanded universe or any of the games. They killed the Force Unleashed, which I, which I un- unironically love the Force Unleashed games with Star Killer. I love those games. Man, they're so dope, man. When he pulls down the Star Destroyer with the Force, uh, this is so real. And you get to control it, and like you can pull it down. Okay, this is not the Force Unleashed podcast. I apologize. That's a dope game, though. That one's Doji, too. But it re- I guess it really depends on the decision makers at Disney slash Star Wars uh, and LucasArts on how they want to move forward. Because the franchise is not in a good place right now. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not. Like, a Star Wars movie has never bombed. Even the even the the prequels that people didn't generally like made a lot of money. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. People went yeah. out and saw them. But to have a Star Wars movie with a high budget and high promotions and Han Solo solo cups and all types of crazy stuff to bomb like bomb like legit bomb is frightening for that franchise because it's like a wake up call. Like okay, guys, we need to start doing things different because apparently we're losing the audience. Why are we losing the audience? I, you know what I mean? Go from there. I, I think Star Wars is kind of going through something similar to what DC is going through right now. Yeah. And and I, I've liked all the DC movies that have come out. and But I do realize that they need to do, they need to change what they're doing because it's, it's not, I guess it's, it's not working right now. Yeah. And you know, we got, and they need to change the narrative. You know, they, they, we, they, at Comic Con this past year, this past, like a week or two ago, they put out those Aquaman and Shazam trailers, and right. they, they got everybody talking about how good it looks. Yeah. And, and it's, I think that when, when episode, when they put out the trailer for episode nine, I think that's what they need to do. They need to, it needs to, change the narrative of Star Wars. Yeah. It needs to, you know, get people talking and be really excited about Star Wars again. It needs, and, yeah, it needs to knock people's socks off, man. It needs to make people feel that warm fuzzy again. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we need to see Luke in the trailer. We need to see... We, honestly, I would love if they did a big time jump. You know what I mean? Let it be like 10 years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, that, that's not going to work because... Happen, man. I, I know. I, I, it's super not going to happen. But that's what I want. I want it to be like Ray is already like super trained up. We ain't got to go through her being like a Padawan. You know what I'm saying? Like the resistance has rebuilt itself. That's what I want. But I'm a weird Star Wars fan. Um, but um, it, another, another thing that has is divided the people on on whether or not they should bring back right. Or whether whether or not they should recast Carrie Fisher for episode nine, and it's it's become well now they've announced that they're going to use old footage of her. Yeah, of Carrie. Then, yeah, and they they've announced that, and I think that kind of pleases both sides of it. Yeah, and I think that because well that it gets. 
people people satisfied that wants to uh Come on. Okay, you can pick up where you left off. That's no problem. I'll edit it out. Because it's you're going. I can pick them now. A little bit. Okay, there you go. Right now. Yeah, you're coming in. You're coming in solid now. Okay. Uh, uh, with the with uh, Carrie Fisher and you know her being. In, in this movie now, it it, it kind of satisfies both sides. It's with the people that want her, wanted her to stay, wanted, wanted her to be, in, didn't want her to be recast, and it kind of satisfies both. And with that, it pleases both sides. And you have right. the, the the people who are with with the, they didn't want let it recast. You know, they they are satisfied, and, and he has the people who did want to recast, but now that that Carrie Fisher can be there, they're they're satisfied, and yeah. and now we we got you got that part out the way, and that's kind of been solved for now, right now, and yeah. and I'm very. Curious about the future of Star Wars after Episode Nine. What are they going to do? And what, like, let's say, you know, they say they're probably going to do an Obi Wan movie, a Boba Fett movie, and I want, I want to see movies with new characters, like do a, I don't know, a, a movie about the Hut Cartel or a movie about. About the, uh, about the, I don't know. About the origin of the Sith. Or we could do a a movie about, just about the very, about the very first Jedi or something like that. Yeah, man. Uh, If I was to say kind of what the future of Star Wars is, I did hear that Ryan Johnson is going to be doing the whole trilogy, the whole next trilogy by himself. And that is going to be different. It's going to be based on different things. It may not even be based on Ray and Finn, you know, from what we're hearing. Yeah, Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Which has to be it's, it's not going to be 10, 11, 12. It's going to be a new. It's a completely different yeah. thing. It, yeah, man. So we'll have to see, you know. Uh, a lot of you have been speculating that it may be over public. And Ooh, man, don't get my hopes <laughs> up, man. Like, I don't even know how to act. I'll be showing up in Jedi robes myself, damn it. I'll be ready to go. So, in short, if you had to give your elevator pitch on how to fix Star Wars, not even fix Star Wars, but how how to uh, appease Star Wars fans, what would your quick pitch be on how to appease Star Wars fans? Well, well, first of all, you gotta you gotta come out with episode nine and have it be have it be a fantastic movie. That's the first thing, and right. And then after that, you they they say they're doing Boba Fett, Obi Wan, and probably some other characters that we know. And while I am excited for Obi Wan and the Boba Fett movie. I think they need to start doing some characters like just like I'm not I'm just saying like do some uh, movies about characters what we don't know like with Rogue One you know they yeah while it is it's set in a time period that we know it's about a whole new set of characters and and I think that we need to see more stuff like that in Star Wars like I don't know. Do a, yeah, a movie about the the origin of the rule of two, or do a uh, no. or do a movie about the Hut Cartel, or yeah, man, or do movie a movie um, about I'm, I remember I have I always had an idea about how you can do a Boba Fett movie is you can do basically where 
these group of bounty hunters, they're going after something and Boba Fett is a part of it. And that's one way you do it. Yeah, man. Uh, the future of Star Wars is bright depending on how they handle it. Like you said, they can do a lot of individual movies about the rule of two. They can definitely do movies about the Hut cartel. Uh, they were going to make that one video game about all the Hut cartel stuff, but they canceled it. So mad about that. But fans um, need to be lulled back into a sense of security. And then hopefully they can mature and be able to handle the new stuff that's coming down the pipe. Um, and I think that's a good place where we can actually end this conversation uh, end the, end the topic. Um, on how can we help fans, how can Star Wars fans be better to the community? <laughs> it's like how it's pretty much what we've been kind of going over. Uh, so where can we find you, TJ? You can find me on my YouTube channel called TJ the Ninja Nerd. I talk about comic book movies, Star Wars, Dragon Ball Z, video games, some other anime as well. And you can find me on Twitter at SupTerrence at and you could, and I talk basically give updates on my channel about give my first thoughts on big news that's dropped and everything. Yeah. And sometimes I put post art art I've done on there. Yeah, man, you're killing it. Yeah, bro, I saw some of your art earlier. I was like, yo, man, uh, Rick, Rick one. Yeah, man, that Rick one was was slick, bro. So definitely, you had to like that one. Um, and as always, if you like this uh, show, if you want to contribute to our channel monetarily, you can always visit visit us at mastersofthenerdiversecast.com, where you can listen to all prior episodes um, from our podcast, and you can join our Patreon with a uh, very low, low $5 foot long amount of $5 a month. You can actually get some of our exclusive content, um, art tutorials by yours truly, Mike G., uh, and some of our other reviews and top tens. I want to thank you again, TJ, for being on our show. Man, this has been amazing. Thank you, man. Absolutely, man. We definitely got to wrap about some other stuff. Got to have those convos. And I will always ask you, as our faithful listeners, thank you so much for listening. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe on to however you're listening to our show. May that be through iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, or iHeartRadio. And I will definitely thank you and ask you to always look towards the skies. Look towards the skies. <laughs> <laughs>